Thank you everyone for joining us this evening. I'd like to begin by uh, introducing myself. My name is Kim Amidzik. I know I've met many of you who are um, participating this evening, um, but for those of you who haven't met me, my name is Kim Amidzik and as the superintendent of Greendale Schools, I would like to welcome all of you to our first step in building a community vision. I sincerely appreciate that you've taken the time tonight to engage in this work with us to ensure that our schools continue to add value to you, to our students, and to the Greendale community. Tonight, we'll be sharing a lot of information. And over the last year, one of the blessings that we've had as part of the pandemic is uh, the use of video to connect across to space. Um, and it also affords us the opportunity to record. So we are recording this evening's presentation and that will provide opportunities for people to go back and review things as they're considering participation in future listening sessions. In order to stay engaged, one of the ways that you can do that as you listen is to connect uh, and to stay connected to the presentation is to jot down your thoughts throughout the presentation. This time you might wanna find space to write down or record your thoughts. You can make two lists. One list would be, I noticed. And so it might be things that you notice throughout the presentation that really stick with you. And the second list that you can make um, would be uh, titled, I wonder. And that's a spot where you can jot down some questions or some extended information that you might be seeking or wanting to consider as you hear about some of the things within the Greendale schools. At several points throughout tonight's presentation, uh, we'll give you an opportunity to share some of these reflections anonymously. Uh, so your private notes might be helpful to you to be able to engage. You can see on the screen, these are the topics for tonight's agenda. And I'm going to begin with introductions and those introductions will start with the Greendale Schools. We are Greendale Schools. We are Greendale Schools. We are Greendale Schools. We are committed to inspiring each student every day. We are committed to supporting our community. We are community partners. We are more than 15,000 alumni. We are more than 15,000 alumni. We are Greendale Schools. We are Greendale Schools. We are Greendale Schools. We are Greendale Schools. We are Greendale graduates and Greendale parents. We are inspiring minds. We are committed to our students. We are your student leaders. We are teaching our children to achieve, to care, and to grow. We are your neighbors. We are more than 2,700 student leaders. We are the school staff that help students connect their learning today with their life's work tomorrow. We have more than 2,700 students in five schools. We work with families and older adults. We are committed to our students. We are Greendale Schools. 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 Next, the next person I'd like to introduce is Dr. Joe Schrader. Dr. Schrader combines successful leadership experience in teaching and administration with a passion for leadership development. Dr. Schrader is an ex assistant executive director at AUSA and previously served five years as superintendent of Muskego Norway School District. Prior to this, Joe was the assistant superintendent for educational services in the Elmbrook School District, principal of Brookfield East High School, associate principal of Evansville High School, and an English teacher at both Menasha and Parker High Schools of Parkers in Arizona. During his 33 years in the field, Joe has been awarded been an award-winning teacher, principal, and superintendent. He was named the 2011 Wisconsin Superintendent of the Year and also received the 2010 AUSA Distinguished Service Award for contributions to the profession. In addition, Joe led Muskego Norway Schools to, the, to Wisconsin Forward Award Mastery Level Recognition in 2010. It's only the third K-12 school district to ever be so honored in this program of organizational quality based on the Baldrige Criteria for Performance Excellence. Dr. Schrader has three degrees from the University of Wisconsin, a Bachelor of Science in Secondary Education in English, a Master's of Educational Administration, and a Doctoral Degree in Educational Administration. Dr. Schrader will serve as the facilitator throughout the strategic planning process over the next few months, and I'd like to welcome Dr. Schrader this evening. Thanks for joining us, Joe. Yeah. 
My pleasure. There we go. My pleasure. Thanks so much. And uh, so Kim's going to stop sharing her screen and I'll share mine. And as we get underway, I just want to say thanks so much for the honor here of really working with Greendale. I've been in the community in the region really for over 20 years. Um, as Kim was just kind of highlighting, I was um, I was a principal in the Madison area in 1999 when I came to the region and it's been great. It's our home and I have known of a rich legacy of this school system in Greendale for so long. And again, to be asked to help facilitate this process at this particular point in the journey of the school system is, is wonderful. And, uh, and also just, I've known Kim for, for many years and have respected her work too and members of her team. So again, thanks for welcoming into the community, Kim and all. So let's talk about this. What I, my role in, in maybe the next eight minutes or so um, tonight is to explain what strategic planning is, why it's important, and then what your opportunities will be, multiple opportunities to engage and provide input at different um, links of the process coming in the next week, next few weeks and months. So imagine this to start. So you have um, you know, a time that goes on and the older I get, man, it just keeps on marching on, holy cow. But let's just say even 20 years ago, just going back 20 years, you, know, you could have been in the community in Greendale and had a, maybe a toddler bouncing around or so, a small child. And then lo and behold, five years later, it's 2006 and they're like, I don't know, second grader, how'd that happen? Five years more, just pop up, you wake up and now this child is a seventh grader you know, you're just putting your nose to the grindstone, being busy with your work, your family, your friendships, whatever. Five more years now that student is graduating Greenfield High School, going on to that next step. And here we are today. And man, that child somehow, you know, you don't look this, you don't look any different, right? But but your, your child now is this adult uh, with a degree in hand, uh, pursuing the passions of their heart, whatever that pathway might be. You know, whatever it might be, that's 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 a possibility. That's a but what happens is time just keeps marching on. Time's a constant. Whether we improve or not is the variable, and that's why strategic planning is so important. Is because um, time will march on. Greendale Schools has been around way more than twenty years, and it's going to be on. We we hope, right, and believe it's going to be on much more um, many decades and centuries in the future. We hope. We are here for a short time with the torch in hand, whether our roles are parent, student, superintendent, principal, teacher, whatever it might be, lo loads and loads of, of roles. We have a short time of holding the torch before we pass on to someone else. But as we go back, an organization could go through that same 20 years and say, you know, at some point, like let's go back to 2006, um, people um, in roles like people are coming here today in this session, were parents and principals and, and leaders and teachers and, and what have you, business leaders. And yet people came together, I'm sure, in Greendale and said, okay, so what are some current strengths and some current things we wanna shine and grow? And what are some, um, what's the particular challenges of 2006 that are different from 2001 that help us not just march through time, but actually if we are really thoughtful and come together, we can actually improve. So five years later from now, you know, we're, we're in a better spot. And then we do the same thing. We come together as a community, think about where we're gonna best put our energy and our resources and our time and our talents. So we can take another five years later, five years later be even better. And that goes on and on every five minute year juncture we come back and do that. So again, this should not be new. I'm sure it's not new to Greendale schools. In fact, I know it's not new. The point is why we do strategic planning is because time is a constant, but, but improvement is a variable. And why we do strategic planning is because we wanna make sure that we learn over time, we continue to adapt and become, um, continue to be at that creative and um, cutting edge of whatever's going on in the environment of the region, the state, the nation, the world and that we are relevant and leveraging our strengths, addressing our shortcomings if they exist and making sure that every juncture we're getting even deeper in our service and our success for the students and the community we serve here in Greendale Schools. So that's the idea so that out of you know, the process we're gonna describe that we can take it to another level, um, building on the current strengths and getting even better. That's the idea. So strategic planning, what the what I'll show in a little bit the processes, but the why is so important again, because Time is a constant, improvement's a variable, strategic planning helps us harness the potential to improve at each juncture of the journey. So it's kind of like this, right? We all can be really hunkering away, almost playing whack-a-mole as a parent, as a, as a, as a worker, as a, just a uh, community member, whatever, just you know, 
not nose of the grindstone, hidden away, trying to stay on top of things. And as Stephen Covey, you may know as the author of Seven Habits for Highly Effective People, Seven Habits of Highly Effective Organizations, et cetera, multi-million um, bookseller across the world over, the, over decades. He has this great um, comment about, you know, there's two things working in, in parallel when we're really effective. One is we need to be efficient with our management. Um, and there's part of strategic plan that's about being clear on how we're going to, once we have a plan, execute the plan. You're going to see examples to celebrate here shortly when Kim takes the mic over and her team and shows some of the things that would be evidence in my mind that has been good work, um, people climbing up that ladder from five years ago to make the system even better. But there's also, every time we do this, this idea of leadership that we have to, you know, as we're working diligently to implement something, for example, a strategic plan over many years, we have to make sure that once we climb to the top of that ladder, that it's on the right wall, that where we get to is where we want to be, that it actually matches the aspirations of what we think is possible and maybe even beyond. So that's the idea. We need both. Um, because And strategic planning is, I think, a great combination of efficiency in execution and implementation of the vital few things you ident identify through your strategic objectives. But it's also just importantly, making sure that you start with that end in mind and idea of what that vision is, as Kim so well said here at the start of her presentation today. Now, as she mentioned in my, and, and again, that very too long of an introduction, but thanks Kim for the kind words. But as she said that, you know, part of my process when I was working um, almost, I think 17, 18 years ago now, I was, um, moving from like a building principal to um, uh, the assistant soup in, in Elmbrook. And at the time we were making an, a commitment in Elmbrook schools to a uh, continuous improvement methodology called the Baldrige Criteria for Performance Excellence. And as I was taking in the new system leadership role, my, my boss had said, Joe, um, I, I would like you to also lead this uh, work around continuous improvement, which was a huge uh, challenge, but also a great opportunity because among that really kind of um, did a lot of things for my, the way I think about leadership and the way I think organizations can really be wonderful stewards and, and, and supporters of their community. So one of the things I got to do each year is go to what you see on the screen, this annual um, conference that was called the Quest for Excellence. And so at that, you would see the, the winners, the most impactful organizations in their fields, whether they're business, finance, manufacturing, nonprofit, healthcare, education, et cetera. And part of the deal, if you got the award, you got to share your story. And a key part of the story is the different process pieces, including, here it comes, strategic planning. And so strategic planning, what I found out was incredibly important. In fact, in terms of the process pieces to become one of the world's best, um, you know, one of the best in the world and regardless of your sector of the economy was that you need to have leadership really doing a great job with strategic planning with their stakeholders and strategic execution of that plan. And so it really made a mark on me. So I would say in general, when people say what's leadership in my job now with uh, my day job is with the Wisconsin School Administrators. I, I, I facilitate school and system leadership across the state in education. Um, when, I, when people ask what's leadership, I think it ultimately boils down to three things that are really critical to what we're doing here today. It's about leaders, and that's more than just Kim, but leaders across the system working closely with stakeholders, all sorts of folks, some of you here and many more beyond, and then ultimately working together to identify the next, next best, um, most prioritized and um, um, highly impactful direction. So again, leaders, stakeholders, and direction. That's leadership. And if you get that right, you have an opportunity to do exactly what I had in that opening slide. Every juncture continue to be ever more relevant, ever more impactful, and continue to raise um, the impact and the service to your community and students to the next higher level based on the journey. So um, ultimately what we're going to do, so the strategic planning process, because part of what I said I would do in these opening minutes to explain what it is, I see it as a few levels of things. First, it starts with a foundation of just being really clear about who we are. So I love that opening video. We are Greendale Schools. Well, we are, I think, hopefully over time, you'll get people are even getting deeper about what that means and the process will help. So strategic planning process has at first a mission. Why do we exist? Concisely expressed. Um, then where are we going to go? The vision. So what's our preferred future? The, your vision should be a very concise answer to the following question. What do we want to be widely known and respected for five years from now and beyond? So mission, vision, and then the beliefs, a, a short list of those core things we hold in our, in our, deep in ourselves that um, we have to um, believe in and commit to in order for our mission and our vision to come to life. 
So that's what, that's the first part. That's the foundation of the strategic plan. And if you're on the work team, that I'll explain in a second, we'll start with that because everything comes from that foundation. Once we know why we exist at a really deep and concise level than ever, once we are very clear about where we're trying to go, our preferred state, um, the next level, um, what we do is then we start thinking about three areas of work, typically. We're gonna think about, because school systems are highly people intensive, we're gonna think about what few things would we want to prioritize in the next five years to help our staff and, and human resources grow deeper in their service to our students and community, what supports do they need? So a few things there. Another area of work is typically about how do we, what few things we wanna to do to leverage and build relationship with our families and communities and our partnerships in those areas. And then thirdly, how do we become even better stewards of, this, of the community's finances, facilities and operations? So all that's about a few things. And so strategic planning, once you're clear on the foundation, why you exist, the vision that you're aspiring to, the beliefs that hold you together, then you start thinking about what are the few, vital few strategic objectives, our priorities to focus on for continuous improvement in each of these areas over the next five years. And you can't do them all. You can't, we all have a lot of things we'd like to do, but you know, he who has, or she who has um, many priorities has none. And so we have to keep it to a vital few, but if we do that well, what happens is it sets us up for better than ever student well-being and success in the system. Again, every five years we're getting up, we're getting better. We're becoming better um, um, sense of who we truly can become as a school system. We're working deeper with our stakeholders and, um, and with each other for the benefit of our students and the community's future. So it's really exciting to be that. I hope you can hear that in my presentation. I mean, it's hard work, but it's also the most thrilling work because it can change lives like I think almost nothing else. So what is the process? That's my last piece and how would you get involved? So this is the process, as Kim was saying up front, this is the launch event. So thanks again for joining us. It's recorded. So if, if your friends couldn't join us today, your neighbors, let them know how they can watch this and, and get the overview of, of where we start with this process moving forward from tonight. There will be, um, in another week or two, there will be four opportunities for community listening sessions. Think of these being Zoom opportunities. I'll be facilitating those to get a sense of strengths, weaknesses, areas for potential priorities, those sorts of things. And we'll, we'll give you four different opportunities at different times of the day to hopefully um, give us your thoughts on that via Zoom. And I'll explain before we leave tonight how you can get access to, uh, and get into those um, sessions. The third thing you'll see here is a work team. Now think about this being a large strategic planning committee, dozens of people, a representative slice of the community, various roles, various um, backgrounds, all that. Just like, again, a proportionately, hopefully representative um, slice of what the community, uh, who, who makes up our community in Greendale and the Greendale School District. So they'll come together. These are people who are willing to commit and able to commit a full Friday and a Saturday morning, two different times. So you see the first one, part one, April, that's a Friday, April 30th from eight to four, um, um, Saturday, May 1st from eight to noon. And in part one, we'll work through the foundations I just described, plus some preliminary ideas of what are the uh, maybe um, some initial strategic objectives in each of these areas. That would be part of what we hope to get accomplished that first weekend. Even if you can't be on the work team, you could still be part of a community survey because part of the plan and the process is also to roll out between part one of the work team and part two, a community survey, which gives you an update of what's been going on with the work team and strategic planning process, give you a chance to know what are some of the preliminary thoughts about what might be five-year priorities moving forward for the system's betterment, and then your opportunity to give input into those. And, and give input in time before the group, the work team comes together again in early June, as you can see, again, a full day Friday, June 4th, uh, Saturday morning, June 5th, to finalize those recommendations and some other steps in readiness so that by July, the board meeting on July 12th, we're ready to forward recommendations for strategic planning and objectives, priorities for the next five years for the school system, so that beginning in, as soon as the fall of this coming school year, we can start to implement that five-year plan. So again, those are all the pieces. Again, before I, um, I, I'll, you'll see me a few other times tonight, particularly at the end to talk about how you engage in the next step of this, if you're interested with the listening sessions. But also if you'd like to be part of that work team, again, and able to commit to these dates you see, um, there is on the district website, you can go to the news and announcements page of the district website and in there, you'll get access to a Google form through a link. And if you put your information in there, that information will allow the district to know you're of interest. 
And again, um, they'll follow up with you. And um, if you're interested in again, applying to be on that work team, all are welcome to pursue that. And again, so if you're interested in the work team, one more time, go to the district website, the news and announcements page. When you get there, find the information about strategic planning process, link to the Google form and put your personal information and that'll allow the district to reach out to you and, and, and know that you're of interest in this process. So again, all of that is to lay out uh, idea of what's the preferred future for the Greendale schools five years from now and what are the priorities to help us be become that and make that a reality. But before we get into the preferred state, it's really important at this juncture to talk about the current state. And to do that, I'm going to stop sharing my screen and turn it over to Kim and her team to help you give a good idea and to even celebrate, I think, some of the things that have been going on in the past five years to make Greendale schools even a better place for you. Thanks. Thank you, Joe. Um, and for those of you, oops, let's click through to <laughs> one moment. For those of you who have registered for this evening's webinar, there will be uh, an email sent directly to you with those links to sign up uh, if you would like. But for those that have not registered for the webinar who are watching this in a recorded fashion, that those are great directions for how to get to the next step. Uh, serving as a leader in the Greendale School since 2001, I have actively participated in the previous three strategic planning processes. So that, that uh, trend line that Joe was sharing, um, I've been part of the last several and serving as a leader to, since 2001, that really looks like about my timeline. So <laughs> our most recent strategic plan, Vision 2020, has driven our improvements since 2016. And tonight, as we discuss our current realities in the areas of student success, community partnerships, staffing, and funding, as Dr. Schrader described in that graphic, uh, we will share the influence and the impact of Vision 2020. First, we're gonna start by taking a look at our students who are the center of all we do. Our mission at this point is focused on a commitment to developing leadership, creativity, and educational excellence for our students. And that's how it's worded within our mission statement currently. We seek to create multiple opportunities for learning to develop each student's unique abilities, support success, and contributing citizens to our global community. And so it makes sense that we begin with understanding our students. And to do that, I'm going to introduce Maggie Olson. Ms. Olson serves as the Director of Equity and Instruction, and she joins our team after a long tenure as the founding principal of Milwaukee College Prep, 38th Street School, which is a charter school in the city of Milwaukee. Ms. Olson earned her bachelor's degree from the University of Wisconsin in Education and her master's degree from the University of Minnesota in Educational Leadership. This fall, she will begin her doctoral studies at the University of Wisconsin in Educational Leadership and Policy Analysis. She brings a passion for student learning and a value of diversity. Maggie, I turn it over to you. All right, thanks, Kim. So who are our students? When I think of our students in Greendale, I think of all the smiling eyes with their masks on in class and um, that I have the honor to serve in the role of Director of Equity and Instruction here in Greendale. When we look at our students from a demographic perspective, here is the makeup of our school community. We have 13% of our students um, have IEPs, 27% of our students qualify for free reduced lunch, 12% 12 of our students are learning English for the first time, and we have 73.2% of our students are white, 4.7% are black, 6.5% are Asian, 12.8% are Hispanic or Latinx, and 2.8% are indigenous. We have a very diverse group of students that we serve. Last year, Sources of Strength at our high school asked our students to tell them who they are. And they answered with so many different ways. They answered with words such as kind, resilient, strong, and unique. Our students are all these words and so much more. Kim um, will be sharing with you how we hope to shape our students in our last strategic plan and how we're gonna move them forward. Take it away, Kim. Thank you, Maggie. I'm actually going to take it back to 2012 uh, for one of our strategic priorities. Uh, recognizing our mission includes developing citizens who contribute positively to our global society. During the strategic planning process in 2012, the community set a goal to identify the key attributes for a gr graduate of Greendale schools. 
a team which included staff and community members identified these five attributes, character, citizenship, communication and collaboration, and critical and creative thinking, all on a foundation of personal wellness. Our vision to 2020 extended that, focusing on identifying instructional methodology that supports both academic learning on the development of attributes of a Greendale graduate, and our strategic priority focuses on project-based learning to personalize learning. The measurement of success includes increasing the percentage of students reaching college readiness benchmarks and engaging in learning. So I wanna begin by talking about the strategies implemented for project-based learning. We began with significant professional development in the area of, of project-based learning as a teaching strategy. And in the last two years, teachers have implemented at least one project in most classes. And these are a couple of our examples. Team Inspire, which eighth graders became empathy advisors. Team Inspire eighth graders at Greendale Middle School uh, investigated issues like discrimination, inequality, stereotypes, and racism as part of the social studies curriculum. Fourth graders at Highland View, which is over here, uh, each selected a biome to research for their science unit in environment and life. After learning about the characteristics, climate, flora, and flauna in their biome, students created a project to display for their grade. The students grabbed their passports and took a trip around the world, visiting different biomes and reporting back on what they learned. And the final skill that we're showcasing is over here in interview skills. Um, our Connect students at the high school honed interview techniques and learned how to write open-ended questions, which are important skills for developing a video project, specifically in the area of media communications. Students identified an individual who has had an influence on the Greendale community and conducted a Zoom interview with them. From there, each student created a three to five minute video profile applying their questioning techniques. Students also learned how to conduct interviews and edit raw footage to create a finished story. And all interviews were held remotely. This is a few examples of how we developed the teaching methodology of project-based learning. And as we think about measuring the impact, what you saw was increased percentages of students who are college and career ready. So we're gonna take a look at some of those benchmarks. We know that students are more than a test score. And at the same time, specific academic indicators can help the community measure the impact of learning. We're gonna begin with graduation, attendance and reading and math achievement as reported on the state, by the state on district report cards. We know that all of these indicators are givens and expectations in our community. On the most recently reported, uh, the, the most recently reported school report card, um, Greendale Schools exceeds expectations. And we earned an 86 on, as an overall achievement score on math and reading on a scale of 100. That score includes student performance on the Wisconsin Forward Exam in grades three through eight and student performance on the ACT and ACT Aspire in grades nine through 12. Essentially that overall achievement is the performance on statewide assessments across the district. And those scores put us in the top 10% of school districts in the state of Wisconsin, which is something to celebrate. But there's more to success than, than these indicators. And as we dig deeper into academic performance, Research known as Redefining Ready identifies a number of college readiness indicators. This includes a number of metrics that are demonstrated to increase the likelihood that a student will be successful in completing a four-year college degree. In thinking about the strategic priority project-based learning, the goal focused on increasing the number of students ready for college. This is not to say that everyone must have planned to attend a four-year degree, four-year institution, but a student's post-secondary path should be the choice made by the student based on their career interests and goals. Therefore, supporting all students in being college ready ensures the greatest choice for students in their post-secondary path. I'm gonna focus on the outcomes of college level coursework while still in high school. And one of those opportunities is AP, which stands for Advanced Placement. Greenville offers 17 courses and at the end of the course, students can take an exam to earn college credit. A score of three 
or better on a five point scale typically earns credit at most colleges and universities. Greendale has had high participation rates over the, over the course of the strategic plan, but they remain fairly consistent. The goal is to increase and we've remained consistent in our AP. There are other opportunities. And what I've noted here is that 80% of our students pass that exam. So 80% of the students who are taking exams for college credit are passing. However, there's other opportunities that are impacting this data. When we consider our students who are taking AP courses, we consider the proportionality of demographic groups. Since 2016, we have seen improvements in the proportionality of participation and advanced placement. This is an area of growth for us. In both graphs, the bar on the left shows the demographic distribution for all students at Greendale High School. And the bar on the right shows the demographic distribution of students in AP classes during the 2019-2020 school year. Previously, students of color and students receiving free and reduced lunch were underrepresented in AP classes. More recently, as you can see on these graphs, representation of students of color has become nearly proportional and students receiving free and reduced lunch are, are approaching proportionality with participation rates tripling since 2016. And that is also something to celebrate. Oops, I'm not sure what I just did. That was not good. <laughs> Let me put us back where we were in our presentation. And here we are. So as I stated, there are other opportunities to experience college level coursework in the supportive environment of Greendale High School. First, we partner with the University of Wisconsin Oshkosh to offer eight courses at Greendale High School for which students earn college credit. We also partner with the Milwaukee School of Engineering to offer credit for engineering and biomedical sciences courses using the Project Lead the Way curriculum. And we partner with MATC and WCTC to offer career-based technical courses towards an associate's degree to our juniors and seniors. A significant majority of our students have been able to experience college level coursework or earn college credit before graduating from Greendale High School. Another area uh, researched and one of the strengths of the Greendale schools is the variety of opportunities, experiences, and choices. Academic standards are the baseline and based on redefining ready research, engagement in the school community are predictors of success in the workforce. The subsequent two strategic priorities in Vision 2020 focused on some of these career ready success indicators. The youth engagement in, com in the community priority focuses on increasing participation and opportunities beyond the school day. And Greendale Schools continues to invest in opportunities for students to find their passion and connect with others. Over the course of Vision 2020, the area of expansion has been focused on elementary students. And here are some of our amazing opportunities at the high school level. Engagement in co-curricular activities at the high school remain consistent. Prior to the pandemic, participation rates were over 80%. This year, throughout the virtual learning and in-person opportunities, 70% of high school students continued to engage in the 45 different athletic and activities opportunities at the high school. Through park and recreation offerings and specific opportunities to run after school at our elementary schools, elementary engagement increased to over 50% of our students participating in seasonal activities. And the middle school increased their seasonal offerings, increasing to 70% of students participating in school-based activity. So here's your first opportunity to share your reflections. I'm gonna stop sharing the presentation and ask Dr. Schrader to share his screen while we explain how to poll everywhere. Thank you. Welcome back again, everyone, to now the poll here. So I want to um, just uh, draw your attention to the chat, as Kim just mentioned. You should be able to just click on that link, 
And, and if that doesn't work for you, another way of doing it is just open up your search engine and tab in pullab.com backslash Joe Schrader 530. But again, the link on the chat should, should do. And this is a short answer. So you can actually, you know, this is maybe a phrase, a, a sentence. This isn't just a word. So if you key in what you're thinking about what did you notice about the students? What did you notice about the student success and readiness? Were there any surprises? Whatever your thought is, just capture it like you would put it into a message. And then when ready, push return and it'll start rolling up here. So we have our first one in now and again, yep, just like that. You get a short answer, push return, and you'll see these pop in as they get submitted. So again, thanks for getting us underway. Yeah, I, I really appreciate the remarks here. Again, I'm not a Greendale um, community resident. I am a Milwaukee Metro resident and a very proud Wisconsinite. And again, I just appreciate um, what I see is a lot of things to celebrate in what you just um, were able to bring through, Kim, and your staff. And again, you can see, again, thoughtful people coming together around strategic planning in the past led to very targeted work and then some real benefits here for students for continue to be relevant and cutting edge with the uh, conditions that they change over time. And that's a charge also, like you see some of the comments here as are coming in. They're also, again, um, healthy challenges, right? Like how are we gonna build on that? I, I can only imagine what we can do next, right? That whole idea, we build off the leverage and leverage those strengths. So Kim, anything to comment on as you're coming in here? No, I appreciate some of the, the comments that are in here about um, opportunities for students and to really think about um, some of our groups that we didn't highlight within this presentation and how we might be able to represent that. So uh, we will certainly um, continue to share some of that information throughout the process as we think about our strengths, our weaknesses, our opportunities, and our threats in the process. So, and I, I'm pleased to see some of the some of the things that people are highlighting are also affirming to us as we think about uh, where we've been over the course of the last strategic plan. So thank you for that. So again, the idea is there'll be a couple more instances where you'll be able to participate like this. Give us your thoughts. It's one of the early opportunities to provide some input as you're again we're launching this tonight. So Kim, unless you'd like me to, to not do this, I'm going to stop sharing and let you get on with the next piece. That sounds good. Great. Thank you, everyone. See you in a little bit. All right. So the third strategic priority is another area identified in the national research around college and career readiness. Specifically, Vision 2020 focuses on increasing a student's sense of purpose and finding the right fit for career. To build this reflection and access for students, we began with implementation of a curriculum in grades 6 through 12 in which students consider their interests and their strengths. These five career pathways are the top fields of interest among our students. Arts and communication, human services, which includes education, police, and fire science, among other opportunities to serve the community, and health science. Uh, I think that what you might notice is how our students are really choosing opportunities to serve others, which I think reflects some of our project-based learning focus and service learning opportunities. And so they're really developing that, that uh, attribute of citizenship. And rounding out the top five are hospitality and architecture and construction. So we've been working to pursue uh, uh, areas of interest and in building those course pathways that support developing career specific knowledge and skills. 
we sought to engage in community partnerships to continue to support that. So we offer Project Lead the Way in two, er actually three areas. We offer three engineering classes, two computer science classes, and four biomedical sciences classes. And each of these um, career pathways and these courses include partnerships with uh, professionals in the industry, engineers and medical professionals who work with our teachers to present as guest speakers within the field of study or to advise and offer feedback and consult on student projects. So that's one of the pathways, uh, which is the architecture and construction and the medical, um, the healthcare professionals, the health sciences pathways. As part of the strategic plan, we set out to build a more robust program that resembled the Project Lead the Way that has been in development over a longer period of time. And we started Connect. Uh, Connect Media Communications was our first program to launch. And in this program, students who register take a two class period block of time in which they take multiple courses through an integrated project-based approach. And I shared with you a little bit about one of their projects around an interview where they compiled a three to five minute video interview uh, that was reflective of that. They are earning credit for three high school courses and can earn up to nine college credits through participation in Connect. And it's really focused on media communications. One of the important components of that program is that we have community mentors from uh, this field of study or whatever field of study the student is looking to pursue. And every student is assigned an, a unique individual student mentor. And this year we have over 35 community member mentors working with our students. As we continue to evolve this, this is an opportunity for growth. We're looking to expand to other career pathways um, that are consistent with some of those top five areas of interest. ProStart is a program that has evolved and developed and an area in which we engage. So hospitality was one of those areas and we have um, multiple culinary courses that conclude with a pathway to a ProStart certification. And as we work in ProStart, what you see is one of our community mentors here. We have mentors from organizations such as the Pfister, Bartolatas and Bass Bay. Uh, among others who have worked with our culinary students in the area of hospitality. We also have a strong community partnership with MATC and WCTC who have built out uh, programs for our high school seniors to begin their associate's degree in some of these specific areas of study, which you can see align with our areas of interest for our students, nursing, welding, protective services, bioscience, uh, IT. And during their senior year, students are beginning their associate's degree at MATC or WCTC, uh, depending on the program that they're choosing to study. Our participation over the course of the um, last three years of the strategic plan has grown exponentially. Our first year, we had four students. And this year we have over 30 students who are participating in a dual enrollment academy pursuing their beginning of their associate's degree. So we have strong community partnerships that have been supporting and serving our career pathways uh, strategic goal, but we don't just engage the community in our um, career pathways, we engage students in other ways. And so, the Reading Buddies has been in place for a long time and it's a signature opportunity in our community in which an adult uh, is paired with a first grade student and they come together weekly to read together and enjoy books. And that uh, has been on hold this year due to the pandemic, but we look forward to welcoming our Reading Buddies back uh, in the fall. Sorry, Greendale welcomes diversity is a group uh, that came together as part of a community visioning session in 2019 around uh, areas of ways in which we could celebrate diversity. I have a citizens advisory team that meets quarterly. And in fact, our engagement with uh, Dr. Joe Schrader is a result of their advice that we should bring in a professional facilitator to help us through this process. We also have strong collaboration with the village 
Uh, the health department has been instrumental in our response this year. We partner with the DPW and IT services uh, for, is shared between the village and the schools so that we can uh, ensure that we're good stewards of taxpayer dollars. So I mentioned the Welcoming Diversity Action Plan, which was um, established in October of 2019. And over the last 18 months, the goal setting that happened at the shared community visioning session uh, with the village and the schools, uh, there's been an impact on some of the work that we're doing. So we have the three strategic priorities from Vision 2020, and we added some work in 2019. What we've seen happen since then is we have increased the representation in our curriculum. The Greendale Education Foundation was very helpful in supporting uh, through grants, the purchase of a number of new books and resources at the elementary level uh, in our reading libraries that would provide for representation of different racial and ethnic groups, different families and different um, I'm sorry, different families and different um, cultures so that we so that students can see themselves in the books they read and they can also have windows into uh, people who might look different from them. We've expanded our social studies curriculum in this space and hosted some school wide assemblies over the last two years. There has been some revisions to board policies that are coming up. Uh, the student equity team has been formed over the last two years. Um, providing some insights and some support there. And uh, we re redeveloped the position that I was in, and it's now a director of equity and instruction, um, which is very important to ensure our focus on welcoming diversity in our community. So that provides some updates on student success and measures of student success and how we've moved forward and accomplished some of the priorities within the strategic plan. And speaking of our Director of Equity and Instruction, I'm going to turn it back over to Maggie to talk about uh, our students' mental and emotional well-being. Yeah, thanks, Kim. So really quick, I want everyone to just close their eyes for a second and just think about your, your school experience. So we know that academics and student outcomes are really important. What's also really important is that student experience in our schools. When I close my eyes, I think of the dances, the football games, the laughter in the hallways, and the close group of friends um, that meant so meant that let me feel like I belonged. And that sense of belonging is so important for our students. And we want every student to feel like they belong. So right now, this is where our kids are at when we're feeling like we belong. I feel like I'd be remiss if I didn't call out that some of our students don't feel like they belong. And we want all of our students in Greendale to feel like they belong regardless of race, ethnicity, social economic status, home language, sexual orientation, or religion. To feel, We want them all to feel nurtured and to belong. So another thing that we also look at is we really want our students to be able to be stewards of their growth. And according to a Harvard MBA study, students who write their goals and have a concrete plan are more likely to attain their goals. And we want our students to set goals and reflect on their progress. And we want every student in, in Greendale to be engaged and take ownership of their goals and excel. So these are some really things to celebrate that we have so many of our students feel like they are taking control of that. There's also some opportunity for growth um, throughout our um, school system as well in this, but there's definitely some um, celebrations in this data as well. So when we're thinking about personal wellness, in order for our students to excel, we need them to be in a good headspace. And last winter, when we surveyed our students before the global pandemic, over half of our students reported having significant problems with anxiety. So this is something that I'm thinking about when I'm, I'm thinking about, this is before the pandemic. So now where there's so many 
different things going on where we're not having those human connections. That is definitely something that when I saw that, I was like, we need to do something. Um, so over the past decade, we have been using community circles and we needed to bring that practice to all students and make sure that everyone knew that they were part of a school community. Um, this year, all of our staff has participated in community circles at every professional development. Every student in the Greendale schools has had an opportunity to circle up and build community. This is a picture of Ms. Hartman's virtual class sharing their talking pieces, which is a way that you share your voice. Everyone has one voice and then you pass it for in virtual world. So they would kind of say, I'm passing my pen to Jonathan, I'm passing this to Kim um, to build community. Um, we definitely have some work to do in this area still. If we look at one of what one of our students said in December, they came together to write a letter to the board about how they were feeling. And they said that we constantly feel angry and tired, but don't have an exact reason. We cry for no reason and everything doesn't seem like it has a purpose anymore. So we know that we really need to focus on their small social emotional well being. So some of the ways that we're doing this is that we are very lucky. We have awesome staff that love our students and we will continue to leverage the relationships our students have with our, our, our relationships our students have with our staff and make sure that every student has access to the tools to support their emotional development, their self-concept and their social development. We are also, so that's that universal social emotional instruction. We wanna make sure that all of our kids in every grade have access to those tools. We are also in the final stages of determining a community-based mental health partner who will help us create a mental health pathway for our students that need that extra support that they might need after having that universal support that they might need that extra support. So that is some of the work that we are working on um, around social emotional learning. And then Joe, I think it's time for some questions. Yes, again. So, um, and as I as we transition back, and I um, I just want to make a point here. So, in case you did have a, a challenge in getting into the last um, poll, again, I I got a message here. Some people had problems getting access to the chat. So, again, here's the other way you get access. So, before I activate this next question and explain it, let me just make sure everyone can get access to participate. So, again, if you can't see the chat link or get it to it, you, another way you can do this is see what I'm circling now with the cursor. Um, right. So wait, am I sharing my screen? Let me just double check here. I need to share screen. So let me do that. All righty. Back and forth. Here we go. Let's share the screen and show you that. Okay. So now again, as you can see me circling with my cursor here, this part. So just, you can open up a new tab in your search engine. And then in that new tab, just type in polev.com backslash my name, Joe Schrader 530. So again, open up a new tab in your search engine polev.com backslash Joe Schrader 530. And then that should give you access to this next poll question. I wanna activate it and then talk you through it. So this builds on what you just heard Kim and Maggie talk about. So as you reflect on your social and emotional needs over the last year, so again, as you reflect on your own social emotional needs over the last year, what connections can you make to our students in our schools? What are you wondering? Anything around that? So again, short answer idea, push return. We'll start seeing your thoughts pop in as you push send. Again, if you're having a trouble getting in, as you start seeing them come in again, friends, just wanna remind you, pollev.com backslash Joe Schrader 530. And a new tab will get you opportunity to participate in the poll. But here they come. Yeah, that isolation is definitely very tough. And I feel like that is something our students are feeling as well. Uh, 
poll results are from a 2019 survey. And so that, um, that it was a survey for, of sixth through 12th graders. So it is, we are able to break it out by middle school and high school and the levels of anxiety were similar across um, all the grade levels. Yeah, for some of our kids, this has been a good environment. So thinking about what it might look like different. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I think it's something that we definitely want to take a deeper look at and what this anxiety means for our students and how we can address it. Absolutely. And as the ideas keep coming in, just another example of, you know, time marches on. Anxiety is not a new thing. It's been a concern for some time, but now we're at a juncture post COVID during COVID, you know, is there some new challenge with that as we consider, as we think about priorities for the system for the next five years? So this is one of those classic examples from earlier about how does this fit in with this juncture? It's a particular step and point in time in this district's journey. Yeah, fear has been a strong emotion. Absolutely, it's been a year of loss and I think we haven't been able to really work through that yet. So I definitely think this is something that I'm thinking about every day with our kids. The last poll, I'm wondering about that for the... The last poll everywhere broken up by racial and cultural groups, is that the same across all? Oh, we do have the breakdowns of that. We did not share that graph, but we, we are able to um, differentiate and pull out different racial and cultural groups in that um, anxiety. And I'm glad that um, someone is mentioning sources of strength because that has been student led uh, and is one of those universal strategies. It, it's just started. And so I do think that um, it's relatively new and sometimes we need to continue our campaigns for that to have an impact. And so uh, knowing that sources of strength is trying to make a, a difference is really important that our students are taking the lead in solving some of these problems. So Thank you for sharing that. Thank you everyone again for that poll and I'm stopping sharing so we can finish up the last segment. We'll have one more opportunity yet before we wrap up tonight. That sounds good. Okay. So one of the areas that supports our student success is staffing. Uh, niche rates uh, schools using uh, an algorithm that includes some uh, uh, social media responses and some other factors within the community. And the, the exact formula is um, not known to us, but we are through that ranking system, which has been around for about six years, we are number one for best places to teach and number one with the best teachers in Wisconsin. And that uh, rating system is a national rating system. So as we look nationally, we are ranked 22 out of 11,645 school districts for best teachers in America. This is important um, that we attract and retain high quality staff. Um, and so to know that there is some formula that is able to calculate a ranking that uh, shows that we have among the best teachers in America and that we're able to keep and retain our teachers is an important factor. As we've been examining our staffing, what we see is that our staff is not necessarily, it definitely is not uh, proportionately represented and not our teachers don't necessarily look like the students in our school building. So we shared at the beginning that our, we have a very diverse student population and our staff is less diverse. Uh, so one of the things that we've done is we, the board has uh, chosen to engage with an organization called TNTP, which stands for the New Teacher Project, and they've been doing some research with our staff and our students uh, and some of our community members, particularly parents of color, uh, that around what aspects of our community are welcoming and they will be providing a presentation to the Board of Education on April 26th that outlines some of their findings and recommendations around how we can not only attract the best teachers and retain the best teachers, but that those best teachers are representative of our student population and as diverse as our students. And with that, I would like to introduce Jonathan Mitchell. 
Jonathan Mitchell joined our team in July of 2019, and he uh, is our district business manager. He earned degrees from the University of Wisconsin at Madison in accounting and the University of Wisconsin at Whitewater in school business management. In 2019, he worked with the team to establish a program at Milwaukee School of Engineering and continues to lead that team to train future business leaders in the state of, school business leaders, I should be clear, in the state of Wisconsin. And with that, I'm gonna turn it over to Jonathan to share some information on our school finance. Thank you, Kim. I'm really grateful to be able to present to the community this evening regarding our work around finance and operations. Um, so when we think about uh, healthy finances, really what we're thinking about is the sustainability of all of that fantastic programming that we've been talking about this evening. And as we go to the next slide, we need to understand the landscape of our expenditures on an annual basis. We think about our operational budget, more than two thirds of that comes from our salaries and benefits. So when we're wanting to make shifts and realignment um, within that budget, we need to understand those key drivers beyond that staffing area. Uh, we also spend 12% on our purchase services. So you can think about things like our utilities um, and our transportation to the classrooms. And then we spend another 11% on our fund 27 transfer, which means our special education funding. So out of our general operating dollars, we need to align local funds to ensure that students are getting their individualized education program. Um, so those drivers help us think through that realignment process um, and where the, that funding may come from if we're going to have redesign um, when we prioritize our budget. So then when we get to resource alignment, we're thinking about that realignment in a way that's specifically going to make a difference for kids. And so we try to design a model um, as we go to the next slide for how we can uh, conduct that process. And we start with identification of needs. So we don't wanna start with an end goal of fixed dollars. We wanna start by understanding what those emerging needs are that would make a difference if we can provide that sustainable programming. We then do have realities in terms of budget constraints. We have to understand the expenditures and the revenue allocations that we'll have, and then go through the process of figuring out how to prioritize or align those investments so that we can present a budget that is sustainable and is balanced um, and is representative of our fiduciary duties to the community that we're taking care of the school's resources, but we're doing so in a way that's uh, aligned with our school district vision. And so you see, you see here in the center of our screen, thinking through that lens of the vision 2020 um, priorities and how we're going about funding key priority areas. And so this work that we're engaging in now is gonna be extremely important in terms of feeding into future budgetary work so that we understand those that, that lens of where we wanna go in the future. It's also important to uh, conduct that financial alignment that we're having really good communication with the community. And so here we've just highlighted a few areas where we're trying to increase financial transparency um, and making sure that we're having multiple touch points with our community to understand um, the community's feedback on finances and also explain what is a very complex topic. And so from left to right, we have an example of our school finance 101, where we took maybe 60 to 90 minutes with our community members and talked about the building blocks of how you build a school district budget and how that relates to funding levels at the local, state, and federal level. We also provide regular ongoing communications, such as our annual report that updates the community on our spending and upcoming priorities for our school district budget. The third item on our right is our community citizen budget team. And so another area where I'm extremely grateful are our community members that have been lending their time 
um, since I've been in the district and uh, been a process well before my time to sit down and talk about district budget priorities, getting ideas from a, a, a group of community members with a wide breadth of experiences to give us both new ideas, but also help us enhance the work that we're doing as a school district team. And so that group has been helpful at us um, to refining our processes as we go through the budget process. We're really grateful for the community support in maintaining and investing in our facilities. The important piece uh, right now is thinking through all of our efforts to support a clean and safe environment for our students during the pandemic. Uh, we set a really high bar um, for how we're going to ensure that safe environment for students that are coming in each and every day to make it as safe as possible um, during this pandemic. We also were able to complete the referendum projects from the 2018 voter approved referendum on time and on budget. And so here we have a list of all the items that were identified with uh, the referendum to be completed um, to upgrade our school facilities and learning spaces. Our only um, area where we um, were not able to fully complete that work with some of our traffic flow at College Park. Um, but you see here the rest of those check marks um, in areas that we were able to follow through on through that referendum project. And then how do we take care of our facilities moving forward? Um, one area that we monitor um, and record our work and taking care of our facilities is through a maintenance ticketing system. So something that we've emphasized um, in an even greater fashion since November of last year and is an opportunity for us to continue to grow are capturing those maintenance work items in a digital fashion so that we can identify um, uh, those areas where we're um, doing really well at completing ongoing maintenance work and we're quantifying that data to make sure that we're taking care of our facilities, but it can also help us to identify priority areas when we go through our capital long range plan. We're at the completion of the projects through the 2018 referendum, um, but as a school district, we continue to have needs um, to take care of our facilities. And so we wanna make sure that those are aligned really well with the resources that we have available. And so we wanna have multiple data points um, to assist us in making sure that we're doing a good job of prioritizing the highest needs so that we take care of our classrooms and our school sites. And so then to bring some of the ideas together, as we have our conversations around building a budget, we've created budgetary principles. And these are ideas that we've discussed at school building level with our administrative team, with our school board and citizen finance team. And so we thought it'd be really good that we would also highlight those with this team um, as we're always looking for additional feedback in those guiding principles. So we have 10 of them. Uh, we identify first and foremost, what's most important to us is that we're proactive, positive, and we're putting students first. So really driving home that point that we want resources to be aligned in a way that's gonna make a difference for kids. We always wanna make budgetary decisions that are driven by data, and we wanna invest in programs that are in line with our district goals and priorities. We're thinking about the prioritization of resources for our tier one, our universal support strategies, and also maintaining board approved class size targets when we're designing our staffing model. And then when we go to our last five principles, we're thinking through um, ensuring that we are equitable and uh, equity in how resources are allocated. Um, so those things that all students may receive, like a Chromebook, if it's at a certain grade level, all students are receiving that Chromebook, but it also may need to be additional resources a student needs. If we're thinking about a student with an individualized education program, they may have an equity need that they have additional resources so that they have opportunity to achieve at their best. We wanna recommend and invest in programming that can be sustained in the long-term. 
We wanna make sure with our curriculum review process that we're allocating sufficient resources for reasonable needs of that process. We wanna be transparent about what is being funded in the budget. And we wanna utilize possibilities, thinking and finding alternative solutions to our budgetary challenges. The last year has certainly been an era where we've had many opportunities to utilize that possibilities thinking um, to, to identify how we can move forward in a fiscally sustainable way, while also ensuring that we have the resources for all students and can provide a safe environment, whether they're learning online or in our buildings in school. And I think with that, I'm gonna turn it back over to Joe for the next question. Thank you, Jonathan. Um, just as we're pulling this up again, uh, I just have, uh, here's the screen to share. So as we do that, we have one last question. And again, uh, I would just encourage you to go to the pullup.com, put that in your tab, backslash Joe Schrader 530. I'm gonna activate this last question. Um, and again, same as the other short answer idea, once you push return, we'll see what you're thinking. Builds on what Jonathan just presented, reflecting on the district's budget principles, what are your priorities for the financial health of the district based on the information shared. The poll is open. That's a great question and we're not looking to replace teachers. We're looking to um, consider and ensure that we're recruiting diverse pools of candidates as teachers retire or um, take opportunities in uh, education in other spaces or leave the profession. So if for those places where we have teachers leaving for whatever reason that we're re uh, recruiting diverse pools of candidates and able to have um, choices of representative teachers within those hiring pools. So um, a little bit more information will be uh, in the presentation on April 26th at the board meeting, but we're not looking to get rid of anyone. Um, we're looking to uh, change our recruiting processes for when we do need to uh, post and hire for new positions. That's quite a compliment, Jonathan. Yeah, as the, the feedback keeps coming in, I would just say as a person who's getting to understand more about Greendale schools um, tonight and through some of the recent meetings with the staff here, again, I would just share, yeah, very thoughtful leadership here, very much aligning to mission and vision. Um, the point of this process now would be even clearer about what is it that we're about, what is it where we're going next, and then how do these priorities moving forward help us become even a better version of our current selves as a, um, you know, a, a key organization and um, I think asset to the students in the future of Greendale. So I uh, appreciate all the comments coming in. Also a good question about improper use of funds. We, we have made some policy changes. The board has been focused on that. And uh, Jonathan has been working with the citizen finance team to ensure additional oversight and um, accountability within the processes. And he has some evidence of that that I'm sure he'll share at some point in the future. Yeah, I'm sure Kim and team, um, part of this is, you know, we've been at this, we're, we're looking to wrap up here in a few minutes, but it, the biggest challenge, I know having done this before too, is just, you can't, sh you know, how, what don't you show? Because there's so much information and how does this get to be over information overload? So again, appreciate the overview. The purpose of tonight's overview was to give you a, a, a again, a, a breadth of where the current state of the system is in those various pillars we talked about earlier, like, right? So with staffing, with students, with community relationships, with finances and fiscal stewardship, 
again, hopefully it gives you at least a, a, a bigger than a snapshot, but still not too much information overload. So you all can get a sense of where's our launch point with current state as we work in the next few weeks and, and months to get to the preferred state planning for the next five years. So really thanks for everyone for this. Kim, whenever you're ready, I'll stop sharing the screen and let us finish up the evening. That sounds good. And I like the idea of finding additional revenue streams. So that'll be something that we'll take a look at with our um, with our work teams and in our, our work going forward. So we know that there's competition in the marketplace, that education is a competitive market at this point, and families have choices of where and how to educate their children. Uh, and we know that our financial stability is dependent on remaining the first choice for students, but more importantly, our work with the strategic plan ensures that our schools are aligned with our community and the needs and goals of our families. So we appreciate all of our families who have chosen the Greendale schools as the place that they want to educate their children. And we hope that our continued vision for the future includes remaining a district of destination for not only residents of our community, but others from around the metro area. We know that we've heard from many families that they have chosen to purchase homes or to move to Greendale for the schools, and we value that. So we also know that remaining competitive in the marketplace keeps property values high for our residents in the community. So thank you for your time this evening. I think Joe is gonna provide uh, just a brief review of the next steps in the process and how you can uh, remain involved and provide greater feedback at our upcoming sessions. Well, thanks, Kim. And I'll just keep sharing your screen, of course, since we just have these last two. So again, um, tonight's the launch event. Uh, so if you're interested in the community listening sessions, you see the dates there. There's more detail if you go to the district website into the calendar. So if you go to the district website calendar and you actually will find four different times for those. In fact, Kim, why don't you just go to the next, if you don't mind, let's we'll toggle forward in a second um, to the next slide. And, um, and in that you will see the four exact times and dates. Sorry, I'm um, having a hard time getting it to go yeah, forward. Yeah, no worries. <laughs> Okay. Well, I tell you what, while you do that, let me just talk, we'll come, just know, so we'll get to that in a moment then. Let me just talk about, again, the, the rest of the process here. Again, just a reminder, the community listening sessions are coming. That's, an, that's a level of input beyond tonight. Work team is the most um, invested amount of time. Again, uh, a full Friday twice, and then two Saturday mornings for the dates you see, part one and part two for the work team. A reminder, if you're interested in that, go to the news and announcements part of the website and click on the, the Google form that'll get the information to the board or to the uh, district leadership. And then you'll, um, again, they'll know you're interested and they'll follow up. And again, um, even if you aren't part of that, there's a community survey that'll be coming through in May about preliminary priorities that, this, that the work team's thinking to advance the next level of progress for the system. So again, all those opportunities, plus the board recommendations in July, that's the process. Again, you saw us before. I hope you see multiple ways you can be engaged and give input if you like in the process. So if we're ready, that last slide um, around community listening sessions, um, if it's linked, if it's clogged up there, let me try it on my own here, maybe if you'd like, I can do that. I did advance and it is, I can see it on my screen. Oh, here it is. Not okay. Advanced. Okay. <laughs> Hopefully now. Okay, great. Can you see it now? Yep. I can see it anyway, too. So, all right. So thanks. So, um, so this is what I would say. So the, the last um, listening sessions of next four will be on Wednesday, April 7th at 10. And you can see Thursday and the 8th. We made intentionally try to put these at different times. Um, of course, different dates. Again, if you go to the district website, look at the calendar. There's a live link to get into each of these sessions. Just pick one, please. Be engaged. We'll, we'll be getting information around things to grow, things to glow, um, just general input that will feed into the process that the work team will begin to wade through when we get to the um, dates for their meetings later this spring and early summer. So with that, I would say thanks again, everyone, um, for being part of tonight. Thank you, Kim, and for others in the system for the honor of, of trusting me into your circle to help with this process. Is there anything else before we adjourn? No, I thank you very much. And for those of, those of you who wanna share, um, this will be posted to our YouTube channel um, later this week so that other members of the community who may be interested in participating 
in the uh, community listening sessions or other aspects of this process have an opportunity to see some of this information on our current state. So we will also mark that with some timestamps of when we talk about certain aspects of the school community. So thank you all for joining us tonight. I know it's an investment of time and we appreciate your input.